Hello to everyone. Today we are going to have 14th lecture in continuation to the last lecture what we did was about the eigenvalues and different factorization how the matrix can be factorized how it becomes easy for us in order to find out a solution to the matrix systems. Well, today we are going to have a special topic on singular value decomposition. Before going to the singular value decomposition, we could see that we find applications in many areas control systems, image processing, computer-aided tomography and many more. The name of five classical and celebrated mathematicians who have been made so many applications, those are Beltrami, Jordan, Sylvester, Schmidt, well, they are all associated with the developments theory of singular value decomposition. These singular value decomposition have so many applications as said. Before going to the singular value decomposition, let us make a background how actually the symmetric eigenvalue problem could be posed. So, in order to find out a computational method for the symmetric eigenvalues, we will have a bisection method, the symmetric QR iteration algorithm, divide and conquer method, Jacobi method. So, except for the Jacobi method, all other ones compute the eigenvalues by transforming the into a different form. When you transform into a different form, obviously it is expected that your computation could reduce. So, therefore, we could be able to appreciate the transformation. Now, let us look at into the some of the features of symmetric eigenvalue problem. The real square form of a real symmetric matrix is a diagonal matrix. So, you will have a, a matrix, right? You will have lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. So, these are all diagonal matrices. There exists an orthogonal matrix Q. An orthogonal matrix Q is orthogonal matrix such that Q transpose that is Q transpose A Q happens to be that is lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. This is what is called a diagonal matrix D. What are these lambda i's? Where lambda i, i is equal to 1 to n. They are all eigenvalues of the matrix A. They are all eigenvalues of the matrix A. The eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix are real and the eigenvectors can be chosen to be orthogonal. The eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix are real and the eigenvectors can be chosen to be orthogonal. So, once you get into the lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda n, you can form a matrix. The obtained matrix is a diagonal matrix which is nothing but Q transpose A Q. So, to do that, there is a what we call minimax characterization, minimax characterization, which also we call it as Corand Fisher minimax theorem. Let lambda 1 greater than or equal to lambda 2 greater than or equal to lambda 3, etc be the eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix. Then I will write this lambda i as lambda i is equal to minimum of s, minimum of s, 
maximum of x not equal to 0 but lies in s then x transpose ax upon x transpose x. So if this fraction where the minimum is taken over all subspaces of dimension n minus i plus 1 and the maximum is taken over all non-zero vectors in the subspace of s. So this is what is called minimax characterization. So this is very useful in order to find out the eigenvalues of a matrix. In particular, when you write this lambda 1, so lambda 1 it becomes the lambda max which is maximum of x not equal to 0. So anyway the case x is not equal to 0 is to be avoided. So you will have x transpose ax upon x transpose of x. So the maximum x not equal to 0 x transpose ax upon x transpose of x and lambda n is equal to lambda minimum this is equal to minimum of x not equal to 0 x transpose ax upon x transpose of x. Right? So this is what is called minimax theorem. So if for a particular case you will have lambda 1 right, and you will have a lambda n, lambda 1 is maximum of x not equal to 0 this thing and lambda n is the minimum of the fraction x transpose ax upon x transpose of x. So in order to elucidate this phenomena, let us consider a simple example with the coefficient matrix A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 4, 6. This is a coefficient matrix. And error I wanted to have E is equal to 10 power minus 4 of I3. So obviously, one can compute the eigenvalues of matrix A. So how do you compute eigenvalues of matrix A? So which is 1 minus 2, 2, 3, 2, 3 minus lambda, 4, 3, 4, 6 minus lambda. So the adjustment is equal to 0. So if this determinant is 0, then you get eigenvalues of AR point minus a point, point 0.4203, point 0.2336, then point 0.1867. 10.1867. So the eigenvalues of a plus 3 are minus of 0 0.4203, 0 0.2337, 10.1868. So these are the eigenvalues minus of 0 0.4203, 0 0.2336. 10.1867 and the eigenvalues of a plus b are minus of 0 0.4203 and 0 0.2337 10.1868. So it is slightly because the value of e is very very small value. This is the 10 power minus 4 that means 0 0.0001. So this small value, the eigenvalues with addition of this error would turn out to be this thing. So whereas first eigenvalue if you look at, it is same, minus of 0 0.4203, no change. Look at the here, 0 0.2336 minus 0.2337, that is a change. And third one is 10.1867 minus 10.1868. So there is a change over here. So you could see change over these eigenvalues with small changes in the E. So noting that the norm of E2, so which we call it as 2 norm. 2 norm is nothing but 10 power minus 4. So essentially the small change in the eigenvalues will have change in the eigenvector, eigenvalues. Well, so let us see the pattern matrix. Let b is equal to a plus alpha times of b times of beta, b transpose. Whereas this matrix A is a symmetric matrix. Now using this concept, let us write this matrix A as 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 5, 3, 4, 3, 5, 4. Alpha is equal to 1, beta is equal to 1, 2, 3 transpose. 
alpha is equal to minus 1, beta is equal to 1, 2, 3 transpose. The eigenvalues of Br lambda 3 prime is equal to minus 3.3028 and lambda 2 prime is 0, lambda 1 prime is 0 0.3028. Whereas the eigenvalues of AR, so you can write it 1 minus lambda 2, 3, 2, 4 minus lambda 5, 3, 5, 4 minus lambda. This determinant is equal to 0. Right? So, the eigenvalues of AR, lambda is equal to minus of 0.5157, lambda 2 is equal to 0 0.1709, lambda 1 is equal to 11.3448. So, it is easily verified that lambda 2 is less than lambda 1 prime, less than lambda 1 and lambda 3 is less than lambda 2 prime, less than lambda 2. So, you will have lambda 2 less than lambda 1 prime less than lambda and lambda 3 is less than lambda 2 prime less than lambda 2. Right? Well, with this you do get what you call the eigenvalues. Now, second thing is how do you use what you call the bisection algorithm in matrices? All of you knowing this bisection algorithm, what is the input over here? An input is an n by n symmetric triadal matrix T and an integer m less than or equal to n and given epsilon greater than 0, an approximation to the eigenvalues lambda n is lambda n minus m plus 1, assuming that lambda 1 less than lambda 2 less than lambda 3 less than lambda n. Step 1, find an interval s1, s2 containing lambda n minus m plus 1 since lambda i is less than or equal to lambda norm of t that is infinity norm. Initially, we can take this s1 is equal to minus of norm of t infinity and s2 is equal to t norm infinity norm. So, if you do take this in the first step, what you evaluate in the second step is compute s3 that is s1 plus s2. What is the step 4? Compute n of s3 that is the number of agreements in sign in the sequence. 3 is compute n s 3 is the number of agreements in sign in the sequence that is 1 p 1 s 3 p 2 s 3 p 3 s 3 p 4 s 3 p n s 3. So, you will have 1 p 1 s 3 p 2 s 3 like that you do have p n s 3. If, if n of s3 is less than m, then set s2 is equal to s3. So, set s2 is equal to s3. Otherwise, set s1 is equal to s3. Once you set s2 is equal to s3 and s1 is equal to s3, then test that is mod of s2 minus s1 less than epsilon accept s3 is equal to s1 plus s2 by 2 as an approximate value of lambda n minus m plus 1 otherwise go to step 2 that is test whether s2 minus s1 is less than epsilon if so accept s3 is equal to this average value as an approximate value of lambda n minus 1 otherwise go to the step 2 well the next one is symmetric QR iteration method. What is this algorithm tells us is you have an input that is a symmetric matrix, a matrix set to symmetric matrix. If A is same as A transpose, if the entries of the matrix are real, otherwise you can write it as A is equal to A star. 
symmetric and if it is minus a star skew symmetric fine so what is the algorithm input is a symmetric matrix a output is the approximate eigenvalue of a so what is the phase one transform a into symmetric tridiagonal matrix t transform a transform a into symmetric tridiagonal matrix t using orthogonal similarity transformation p a times of p transpose is equal to so that is p times of a of p transpose is equal to t so transforming this into symmetric tridiagonal matrix t using orthogonal similar transformation so p times of a transpose is equal to t so that is in the phase one so what you do in the phase two is apply single shift qr iteration to the matrix t so by using what we call wilkinson shift right so what is the wilkinson shift wilkinson shift is the following set t is equal to t1 so that means t1 is being assigned as a t for k is equal to 1 2 etc do until convergence find a real shift q so you want to find a real shift q such that t k, t k minus mu of i is equal to q k times of r of k second one is t of k plus 1 is equal to r of k plus k times of q of k plus mu into i so essentially what i mean to say is we can find out a real shift by using what you call t k minus mu of i which will be equal to q k into r k that is what is called q r factorization and the updated one tk plus 1 is rk times of qk plus mu into i then you end this so in the analogous fashion we do have a what we call the divide and conquer method the algorithm first divides a given symmetric triadagonal eigenvalue problem into into two smaller sub problems and then combines the solution of the sub problem into recover the solution of the original problem that is what is called canquar so essentially you divide into small sub matrices in particular two sub matrices and try to find out the solution to each sub matrix separately and then recover it so that the original problem solution could be solved that is what is called divide and conquer Suppose that the symmetric matrix A has transformed into a symmetric trigonal matrix T. So we transform this matrix A into symmetric tridiagonal matrix T by orthogonal similarity. So if you use orthogonal similarity, then what you get is the let T be the matrix and this is the main diagonal, this is the sub diagonal, this is the sub diagonal okay this is the sub diagonal this is sub diagonal the at the end these are all zeros the method can be used to compute all the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors of the symmetric matrix and it is faster than the symmetric qr iteration method that means the method can be used computed all the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors of the symmetric matrix and it is faster than symmetric qr iteration method so essentially what we do is we are trying to use this iterative method where actually it becomes a pure symmetric iteration method. So let us see the very simple example in order to find compute this method. So let us see apply QR algorithm to find eigenvalues of the triadial matrix. So it becomes an upper triangular matrix. So for the sub matrix right bottom of the column a is so look at this matrix so you will have mod of 2 minus lambda 1 1 2 minus lambda that is equal to 0 so 2 minus lambda whole square minus 1 is equal to 0 so 4 plus lambda square minus 4 lambda minus lambda is equal to 0 so you get 4 lambda square minus 3 minus 5 lambda x is equal to 0 this is the thing which we get it so 2 minus lambda square minus 1 is equal to 0 this is the characteristic equation now 
you get values of lambda as lambda square minus 4 lambda plus 3 is equal to 0. So, lambda is equal to 1 or 3, they are all real roots. Both are same distance from a3 3, a3 is equal to 2. Because 3 minus 2, so that is 2 minus 3 is equal to 1 or 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. So, equal distance. So, equal distance. So, both are the same distance from you. So, next we choose mu as the origin shift. So, we wanted to have a little shift that is what is called a minus mu i that is equal to. So, mu anyway you know minus 1, 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Where QR factor is now is depend, determined by the plane rotation. We use the plane rotation in order to find out the QR factorization. Well, for rotation 1 in the plane, so you write alpha is equal to root 2 and c is equal to minus 1 by root 2 that is minus s. So, q2 is equal to 1 by root 2, 1 by root minus 1 by root 2, 0, 1 by root 2, minus 1 by root 2, 0, 0, this is the form, you do that. Similarly, you do get what you call q12 also. So, again for rotation in the 2, 3 plane. So, if you use the rotation in the 2, 3 plane, applied to the matrix, we have got alpha is equal to 1, c is equal to 0 and s is equal to 1. So, alpha is equal to 1, c is equal to 0, s is equal to 1, where you do get a matrix of the form, this form. So, that is q of 2, 3 is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 0. And q will be like this because here you have n diagonal, sub diagonal, 0. It is lower triangular matrix, analogous lower triangular matrix. Well, so again you define q0 transpose that is q23 into q13, then you will have a, this expression. So, when I use this expression, so ultimately I will end up with this matrix minus 2, 1 by root 2, 0, 1 by root 2, minus 1, 1 by root 2, 0, 1 by root 2, 0. So, and if you restore this a1 is equal to a1 times of q transpose that is equal to a1 transpose. So, a q naught, so you get this matrix. This is also a what you call the triangular matrix. So, where ultimately you can write q naught is equal to minus 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, 0. So, let the above process be repeated with u1 whose right bottom corner sub matrix of 2 order 2 has eigen value 3 comma 3. So, so, if you write it here lambda minus 0 1, so 1 by root 2 lambda minus 0. So, it is lambda minus 0 over square minus of 1 by root 2 is equal to 0. So, lambda minus 2 over square is equal to 1 by root 2 etc. So, you can find out the eigen values. Well, so when you write this matrix Q mu that is 3.3660 which is nearer to A33 greater 3. So, therefore, finally I can write this A minus mu i as this is the form of A minus mu i sub diagonal, super diagonal and zeros and Q12 will be this thing, Q12 is this thing. So, therefore, you can write this matrix A as that is Q12 is equal to A1 minus mu i that is matrix you can compute like this and where Q23 is this matrix. And further if you do computation Q23 is equal to that premium triple you do get this matrix final restoring Q1 transpose Q1 Q2 so Q2 so you do get like this so this is the main diagonal. So with this I will stop this lecture. So, I am sure that uh, you might have learned this uh, competition how actually singular validity composition could be used in order to find out the matrix factorization. We will continue the SVD in the next lecture. Thank you very much.